You may have seen or at least heard our final speaker of the night the last time you were at a Stampeders game. Not only does she sing the anthem at McMahon, she is a songwriter, a media personality, an arts enthusiast, and the outreach program director for the Every Woman organization. Please welcome Justine Tyrell. And Taylor. And you too. <laughs> so before I begin, I'm going to tell you a fun fact about myself. And um, usually before I do something really important that involves any level of preparation, I spend a lot of time working on it. And then when I start to panic, I throw it out. And so that's what I've done today while watching all of these other wonderful presentations. Uh, so uh, if I panic, uh, my cards are over there. If you see me running, you'll, you'll know why. So, just, just to note. So, I'd like to talk to you about something that, obviously, being a musician, I'm pretty uh, excited about, but it's more than that. It's something that's wrapped up in the creative, wrapped up in the fun, wrapped up in the idea of just letting go, but it's essentially where ideas are born. Uh, it's where you can become brave, where you can be whoever you want to be in that moment, and it's somewhere where I've personally found a lot of acceptance and grown a lot in my career. I want to take you back to a time when we were extremely divided. Divided by the color of our skin, there was a lot of intolerance. This division followed us to where we would sit, eat, drink, where we could work. It really, really, really shaped how we interacted as a society. Now, through that though, there was something else going on where that idea of intolerance was kind of starting to die. And I like to add in sound effects for dramatic effect. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> so the place that you see behind me, Minton's Playhouse, uh, this is a place where that segregation that I talked about started to die through the idea of music. That fellow there is Bing Crosby. You may know of him, singer, actor. Uh, he also, for the life of him, could not uh, clap on beat. And uh, what he did do, though, he was really great at clapping on the ones and the threes, which I just want to let you know that friends don't let friends clap on the one and the three, okay? But in this case, when he did it, the fellow jammers, which we now know as a term, described that he was jamming up the beat, which really interested me because I wondered where this whole term of musical jamming came from. If it's such a freeing experience, why do we call it something like jamming? So this kind of led to this unplanned chaos that we've come to know as musical jamming. But more importantly than the musical element, it was leading to a type of conversation that was taking place. And the cool thing about it was it was a conversation that was universally understood, spoken, and even just by listening. Once again, I love sound effects. Even just by listening, you could be a part of that conversation. And it's the kind of conversations that I like to have as well. Now with jamming, naturally, there's a lot of times kind of no plan to it. So for all I know, he could bust out into ACDC behind me and I'd be really upset about it. But I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. But just like any good conversation, there's a lot of elements, there's a lot of contributions from the people that you're working with. And you just kind of have to trust what they lay down. it's not just for musicians, I'm just a singer. <laughs> it's not just for musicians. <laughs> because really what it's about is the idea of exchanging ideas and being brave enough and bold enough to just throw something out there, whether it works. You know, he didn't know if what he was going to do was going to work. I didn't know if what I was going to do was going to work. But you go for it. 
Now, author Frank J. Barrett wrote a really awesome book called Say Yes to the Mess, which I feel more or less describes my life. But essentially, he was saying to embrace the chaos that takes place when you're just kind of going for it. Now, you might recognize these guys. Anybody recognize them? Who are they? I hear whispers. Steve Jobs? Yeah. And do we know who the other fellow is? Edison. That's right. Edison. Now, would you believe me if I told you that they were probably two of the best jammers of all time? But not in the way that you're probably thinking, not in a musical way. In fact, Edison, well, what you see behind me, this was his jam studio. Now, this was where he worked collaboratively with others, day in and day out, to throw ideas out there, to test things, to fail. It was okay to fail because it was through that unplanned chaos that some of these amazing inventions that we know of have come to be. Now, Steve Jobs, of course, was an innovative thinker, but he believed in finding the box, running away from it, and creating somewhere in that faraway place. He believed to abandon the idea of convention and to work together with others to come up with your idea. An example of this, we're all probably quite familiar with Pixar Studios, but when Pixar was creating their new studio and they had to build it, they were gonna go with the conventional way of building a studio in Hollywood and you've got your different departments and that kind of thing. But they asked the opinion of Steve Jobs and he said something so important. He pointed out a critical flaw that probably would have went unnoticed. And it's that in the setup of that conventional building and workspace, they were promoting isolation. He knew that the engineers would, you know, tinker with their prototypes and work on their ideas amongst themselves, but they wouldn't have that collaborative exchange that's so, so important. So jamming isn't just something that happens in a musical environment, but it's something that should be happening in the workplace. Now, I'm not Steve Jobs, and I'm nowhere near the brilliance of Edison, but that is me nonetheless, and I am a jammer. And for me, I, I don't just look to the ideas of other people, but I depend on them. And I depend on feedback from others, whether it's me shaking like a leaf at my first open jam that I ever did or my first open mic, uh, or if it's throwing ideas out there when I'm writing songs and lyrics for my album. It takes that creative exchange and not being scared. So I encourage all of you, whether you're a musical, whether you don't have a musical bone in your body, whatever it is, to be a jammer. Be a jammer at home, be a jammer with your friends, be a jammer in your workplace. Because when you do that, you never know the kind of music that will come from that. And I might add, even if you count on the ones and the threes, you could be a jammer too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Justine.